More than six million Americans are living with Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. Nearly two thirds of all Alzheimer's patients are women. One out of three seniors will die from Alzheimer's or one form of dementia. In 2023, Alzheimer's and other dementias will cost the United States $345 billion. There is no cure for Alzheimer's, but there is hope. The Alzheimer's Association is leading the fight to create a world without Alzheimer's. You can help by joining Team Tiger and the Walk to End Alzheimer's on Saturday, October 14th at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. The first survivor of Alzheimer's is out there, but we won't get there without your help. The end of Alzheimer's starts with me. The end of Alzheimer's starts with you. Let's end Alzheimer's. Hey Tiger fans, don't forget that Massillon City School District has a renewal levy on the ballot Tuesday, November 7th. Issue 31 is not a new tax and will not increase taxes. It was first passed by voters in 1999 and has been renewed every five years. Issue 31 will help our district maintain current operations and programming. And always, go Tigers! Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Nate Moore Show here on WHS-TV. Our show is brought to you each week by Reliable Heating and Cooling. I'm your host, Dave Sheets. Joining me as always is the head coach of the Maslin Tigers, Nate Moore. Coach, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. You bet. Another big win for our Tigers last Friday night as Maslin went on the road for the first time this season and defeated Austintown Fitch 42-7. We've talked uh, a bit uh, on the show this year about, you know, falling behind early, but this time your team really had a fast start. Yeah, we went out and played well, played hard, um, executed, made some breaks, um, so happy with how we played. Coach, I know you have preseason scrimmages in August that are away from Paul Brown Tiger Stadium, but everybody knows the regular season is different. When you go on the road, do you and your players and your coaching staff maybe have a little different mindset for a road game? Um, I mean, I would say yes and no. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, no from the standpoint that we try to keep everything as normal as possible. Um, yes, in that, you know, A, there, there are obviously some schedule adjustments um, with, with travel time and, and moving around when we, when we meet and walk through and then those things. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think there is something about going on the road and, um, you know, the, the feeling of invading enemy territory that I think really gets the juices flowing. Um, so, you know, we, we try to maximize the positives, but, but, but really we, we're trying to keep everything as normal as possible. Coach, you had several starters out of the lineup last week due to injury. How would you summarize the play of the guys who did fill in at the various spots on offense and defense? I mean, I, I think they did well. Um, you know, we, we've got we've got good players ready to go uh, when necessary, and um, you know, it, this is not the first time that, that that's happened mm -hmm. over the course of, the, of any season. You're, you're going to have injuries and things that you have to deal with, and um, you know, I, I thought one guy, Dalen Pringle, did a, did a really nice job at corner. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, everybody that 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 um, that is called on to step up and, and, and play some, you know, whether it's 20 snaps or, or 60 snaps, um, 
you know, it's our job to get those guys ready to go. It's their job to get out there and execute to the best of their ability. And as long as we do that, I, I think we're going to be all right. One of the numbers that jumped off the stat page is 439 yards rushing. Jameer Gamble had 233 of those yards, a pair of touchdowns. What was the key to having that much success running the ball? I mean, it's, it's, it starts with the offensive line. Um, you know, those guys played really well, um, were physical, finished blocks. Um, and, and we were getting some tough looks, some, some really nine-man in the box looks. And, um, and th anytime you have that, there's going to be some guys that, that, that you can't block. Mm -hmm. um, and that's on the running back. And, and Jameer did a great job as well. Um, as far as just, just vision and, and finding the, the correct seam to hit. And then, you know, when he gets on the third level and he has an angle, um, he, he's, uh, he's splitting safeties and he's, he's destroying angles that guys have and, um, with his speed. And so he, he, had a, he had a great night. Defensively, you've had some great defensive teams while you've been here at Maslin, and this, this defense ranks right up there with, with the best. Uh, where have you seen the most improvement, say, from week one to, to now week nine? I mean, for us, it's just it, we, we just constantly try to improve everywhere. Um, you know, everybody's got to try to get a little better um, every week, every rep. Um, we, we started off the year with a lot of experience, especially up front, mm -hmm. um, and, and so, um, you know, it, it, for for guys that are that are starting for the first time, there's there's a little bit of uh, figuring out the, the the speed of the game and um, being able to execute it at a high level um, with, with reacting, especially defensively, being able to react and not uh, have to think through things. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so when you have guys that are experienced, you're, you're just further ahead, um, you know, when it comes to that. So, you know, we start off playing pretty good defense, but uh, we want to get better every week. In a moment, we'll talk with a Tiger player, but first this word from Reliable Heating and Cooling. There was a time when 10 miles to the gallon was acceptable. Today's 40 plus mile per gallon cars weren't even in the rear view mirror back then. Of course, this Linux air conditioner wasn't on the radar either. It's solar ready, the quietest, most energy efficient air conditioner you can own. It's time to live in the now. Call Reliable Heating and Cooling for the most advanced technology in heating and air conditioning. When you're ready to live in the now, Call Reliable Heating and Cooling. Lennox, innovation never felt so good. Thanks to Reliable Heating and Cooling, and welcome back to the Nate Moore Show. Joining me now is senior fullback Stephen Hogan. Stephen, welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for having me. First of all, congratulations on the win last week against Fitch. Thank you. From your perspective, what did the team do well that led to that win? Um... Collectively, I feel like the team played good as a team. I feel like we uh, all hit our assignments good as a team. I feel like we minimized the mistakes. Um, I feel like I feel like we we got less flags for mistakes that we don't need. Good. As you were growing up, do you remember when you first started playing football and who taught you the game? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I started playing at the age of four. Um, my dad taught me. And my uncle and my grandpa as well also taught me the game of football. Great. As a senior, you're seen as a leader on this team. Yes, sir. How would you describe your leadership style? Um, my leadership style is more like it's more like laid back, but like I'm gonna get on you like if you mess up. You split time at fullback with D'Angelo Zimmerman on this impressive Tigers offense. Sure. What skills do you need to possess to be a good fullback? You gotta have good feet. Always, you gotta have good hand work. You uh, you gotta be able to block, and uh, you gotta be able to know the offense too, because a lot of plays and a lot of different things you need to do at the position of fullback. All right, and finally, your team comes home this week to face Warren Harding. Yes, sir. What do you expect to see from the Raiders' defensive front and the rest of their defense? Um, we expect uh, a physical front, and um, the defense is uh, more kind of like speed, but we expect a physical defensive line and linebackers. All right. Pleasure talking with you today. Pleasure talking to you too, sir. Thank you. And Coach Moore will rejoin us on the Nate Moore Show after we take this time out. STEM is everywhere. Like here, behind the scenes of The Walking Dead. Cut. We got it. And for every moment like this, there's a crew of people using STEM to bring the dead to life. 
We had 30 minutes to make one of Norman Reedus' outfits look seven years old. When we break down clothes, we tumble it with trisodium phosphate, rock salt, and dish detergent. We stitched together images of our model and created a 3D set that could be walked through in a VR headset. It looked like you were actually standing in the room. There's so much technology involved in directing. We're able to turn 12 walkers into a thousand walker board. That idea became this design, which turned into this set, and that costume worn by that walker, who was having a really bad day. STEM can create new worlds on and off the screen. What will you make with STEM? Get inspired at shecanstem.com. Welcome back to the Nate Moore Show. Coach, we just heard from senior fullback Stephen Hogan, a uh, very engaging young man. Uh, tell us more about Stephen. I mean, I'm really proud of Stephen. Um, he, he's come a, a, as far as anybody that I can think of um, from, from when he started with us as a young guy to now as a senior. Um, and um, he, he was a captain for us one week. We're doing, we've been doing game captain so far this year, and, and he was a captain for us one week. And... Um, He's repping for us at, at our fullback position, like you said, and um, really getting better every week um, at, at a really nice knockdown block um, last week against Fitch. And, uh, and he, he's a strong, tough player, and, and uh, I'm, I'm really proud of how he's developed. Hard to believe we are looking at uh, week nine of the regular season already. At this point, do you and your staff make any uh, changes, whether they're subtle or, or major, in your way you practice or way you keep the players engaged? Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, for us, uh, recovery is always front of mind. Um, you know, we, we, we always plan on a 16-week season. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we're, we're, we are um, um, cognizant of that as, as we go through the year and, and, and early in the season, it's, it's a lot more of a grind and mm -hmm. there's things you have to get in and you, and you have to practice and, 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 and develop um, at things. But over the course of the year, um, we, we do back off a little bit. Um, I would say especially on, on, on Mondays, we, we, we actually did a, a no sweat day on this past Fitch Monday, mm -hmm. um, we were coming out of a really a three week grind where the, where the kids played really well. And so we, we gave them a, it wasn't a day off, but it was, it was a, we, we, we weren't on the field except for walkthroughs mm -hmm. um, and got them back in the ice baths and a lot of stretching and, and, and rolling out and, and just concentrating on recovery. And um, this past Monday, we, um, we, we, Similar but different. Um, we got we got out on the field for about an hour and twenty minutes, mm -hmm. um, with some extended meeting times, um, and then, then Tuesday we got after it still. So you know we, we still have to do some of that, obviously. Um, but we want to be uh, conscious and in front of mind with with recovery and keeping our guys fresh and ready to go on Friday nights. This week you come back home to face Warren Harding. Warren Harding is one of four teams that have been on the schedule for a long time, along with Fitch and Glen Oak and McKinley. Uh, tell us about their overall program and the long-running series uh, they have had with Maslin. It's the second most played game uh, in our history, and um, you know, there's a lot of, um, it, it, it is a rivalry game. You know, it's not the rivalry game, but it is a rivalry game, and um, you know, it, it, it's a game that goes back, I think, to the 20s. Um, I haven't looked that up this year, but um, off the top of my head, 1922 pops up. I'm not sure if that's correct or not. Um, but um, you know, we've played this game a ton, um, and, and there's been a lot of heated games back and forth. There's been some controversial games, as you know, like the, mm -hmm. the, the clock game and, and whatnot. And um, you know, the, the series was actually suspended for a time. Um, Maslin's decision. Uh, when, when, when we thought that we were um, uh, poorly treated by a, uh, a, a crew that may have been slanted in the wrong direction <laughs> at Warren. Mm -hmm. um, so so th there's been some heat in the rivalry. Um, you know, you think about the, uh, I think it was the 0-2 team. Um, that was a really, really good team, a team that had, had, a, had, a, had a shot to win it all. And, 
Um, I think that was the first year it came back. Uh, the rivalry came back after it was suspended and, and lost two really close games mm -hmm. uh, to Warren, one, one in the regular season, one in the playoffs. Um, they've had great players over the years, great coaches. So, um, so it's, it's a big game. It's a historic game, and uh, I'm glad we're still playing it. Offensively, uh, what formations will you see, and uh, how about some of their key personnel there? Uh, I mean, offensively, they're, they're uh, your general spread type of team that, that you see a lot these days. A lot of 10 personnel, a lot of 11 personnel, more 10, uh, some empty. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the thing that really jumps off the film is, is their team speed. Um, all their skilled kids can run. They got a couple guys that can really, really run. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a key for us is containing those guys. And then on the defensive side? Uh, I, mean, I mean, speed again. I mean, they're, they're really fast. Um, uh, they're fast in the back end. They're, they're, they're fast at the linebacker positions. Um, they operate out of an odd front. Um, it seems like you're seeing more and more of that over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, so nothing that, that we're unfamiliar with. They, they, they will bring some pressure, um, but, uh, but they're, they're really fast is, is the biggest thing. All right. Well, good luck this week. Thank you. Coach Nate Moore joining us on the show. Thanks to Coach and Senior Fullback Stephen Hogan for joining us this week. Our show brought to you each week by Reliable Heating and Cooling. I'm your host, Dave Sheets. Thanks for watching. And as always, go Tigers! Hey Tiger fans, don't forget that Massillon City School District has a renewal levy on the ballot Tuesday, November 7th. Issue 31 is not a new tax and will not increase taxes. It was first passed by voters in 1999 and has been renewed every five years. Issue 31 will help our district maintain current operations and programming. And always, go Tigers! Hello and welcome to the Stark County Humane Society. Today we're going to give you a few pointers when considering adopting a new furry friend. All animals here at the Stark County Humane Society are spayed, neutered, microchipped, vaccinated, dewormed, and if old enough, heartworm tested for our canine friends. Adopters will receive a free exam within two weeks of adoption at local veterinarian hospitals. We encourage all adopters to take full advantage of this. A one-time adoption fee is required for your new furry friend. When you adopt, you get an awesome adoption packet that includes treats for your new fur baby and savings for you. But this is not where the cost of adoption stops. Did you know the average cost of an animal like a new puppy or kitten can cost up to $500 annually? This includes annual veterinarian visits, preventative care, and everyday supplies like crate, litter, food, toys. But I hope this doesn't scare you away. Adopting an animal is a huge responsibility and a commitment. Please take the time to consider the cost of adopting a new pet into your family today. I hope to see you soon at the Stark County Humane Society. Please visit our website or visit us on social media for more information. More than 6 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. Nearly two-thirds of all Alzheimer's patients are women. One out of three seniors will die from Alzheimer's or one form of dementia. In 2023, Alzheimer's and other dementias will cost the United States $345 billion. There is no cure for Alzheimer's, but there is hope. The Alzheimer's Association is leading the fight to create a world without Alzheimer's. You can help by joining Team Tiger in the Walk to End Alzheimer's on Saturday, October 14th at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. The first survivor of Alzheimer's is out there, but we won't get there without your help. The end of Alzheimer's starts with me. The end of Alzheimer's starts with you. Let's end Alzheimer's.
Welcome to another edition of Swing. Our show features Tiger Swing Band Director Jason Neal. We're on the air with you every Wednesday night following the Nate Moore Show. Swing is being brought to you by Johnny's Music Shop. I'm your host, Alyssa Jakubic, and here with Mr. Neal to the show. Welcome to the show, Mr. Neal. Thanks for having me, Alyssa. All right. So last week's football game was the first away game of the season. Summarize for us how the halftime performance went over at Austin Town Finch. Well, I was very pleased with our performance at halftime. Um, I think there was a confidence that the band had having done the show before. Um, and actually, we had performed that one twice in one weekend back when we played St. Ed's and had our Tiger Band review the next night. So they had a couple reps under their belt for that show. Plus, we got to work on it again uh, over the past week, and we're getting ready to take that show down to Columbus this week. So um, I think all of those extra reps really helped us uh, perform very confidently, and I, I thought the, uh, the band had a lot of energy, and, and I thought that uh, the crowd response from the Fitch fans was, was a good one. So overall, I was very pleased with our performance. What are some of the common obstacles your band members face when marching in a stadium they are not familiar with? Well, Fitch has a, a pretty open stadium, so that we there was a lot of space on the sidelines, um, and I would say that's probably the biggest thing. But we didn't really face that because, like I said, there was a lot of space. Sometimes you'll get to a stadium where there's not much uh, room on the sidelines, and we have to do our you know our turnaround entrance and things like that. You need a certain amount of space, and uh, I didn't think we had to face that obstacle. I think the only other thing would be just making sure they get their bearings. You know, we're so used to facing the Maslin people, and now we're facing another uh, set of set of fans. And um, so sometimes that can be maybe maybe a little disorienting. But I don't think there's too much um, too much different. I mean, you're talking about a football field. You have all the same markings on there. You've got the hash marks. You've got the the yard lines and markers and things. So. Um, I think the kids did a good job adjusting and adapting to, to a different field. So we've talked about the importance of your squad leaders on the show a lot. Mm -hmm. What exactly is a squad leader and how does a regular band member become one? Well, a squad leader is simply um, the leader of the rank of people that they're marching next to. And um, we use our squad leaders to hold the uh, hold the other members of the band accountable for things, um, to help them learn their music, help them learn their marching routines, uh, and really just to show them the ropes, kind of what it means to be a member of the band. And uh, for each row out there on the field, for each rank, uh, we, we typically have two squad leaders, one on each end uh, that, that the, the other folks can guide to and kind of look to to see how they're supposed to be marching and things like that. Um, and your second part of the question was, how does someone become one? Well, every spring we have uh, an official squad leader audition, which consists of some teacher evaluations. You know, we, we look at the whole student. Are they doing well in all of their classes? Uh, are they a person of character that we can trust to lead the band? We have an interview with those squad leaders, and then they have a marching and playing audition that they each do for us. But we tell our students, Squad leader auditions are going on every single day uh, of the season, every single day of the year, because you are showing your character, you are earning, your tr earning people's trust with every decision that you make on a daily basis. And uh, we try to make sure that we select squad leaders who are um, capable of leading others. And you know, some, some students do a, do a great job, some students do a good job. Uh, not all squad leaders are, are created equal, but uh, we've got a good group this year who have um, led us through learning eight different shows already in nine weeks. So we're, uh, we do rely very heavily on our squad leaders. We'll have more with Mr. Neal here on Swing, but first, this word from Johnny's Music Shop. Band season starts here at Johnny's Music Shop, located at 2492 Lincoln Way East, Maslin, Ohio. Enjoy our name brand band instrument rentals with no credit checks and our large selection of woodwind, brass, string, percussion accessories, and band books. 
Get signed up today for private lessons with any of our knowledgeable instructors. And if you're in need of a fix, all repairs are done here locally in-house. Give us a call at 330-832-3000 and come be a part of our musical family. Thank you, Johnny's Music Shop, and welcome back to Swing. This Saturday, the Swing Band will be attending and performing at the annual Buckeye Invitational at Ohio State University in Columbus. How many years has the band performed at this event? Well, I want to think the first year that we went to this was in 2010, and um, we've gone just about every year since then. There's maybe one or two years that we weren't able to go, and then the year that you know they didn't have an event for the year of COVID. So. Um, probably about 10 or 11 times we've been able to travel down to Columbus and perform in the Horseshoe and um, yeah we're looking forward to another one this Saturday. What lessons will your band members learn from participating in this event? Well that's tough to say. What I hope they learn from this event is that uh, number one they're going to see some bands who are different than us. They're going to see a lot of competition bands. Uh, they're going to see some other um, show style bands like we are, but uh, definitely looking at how different bands do different things. Um, I should say different bands do the same thing, which is put on a show in a different way. Um, and I think when you watch other people do that, you, you gain an appreciation for how you do things and why you do certain things. Um, but most of all, I want them to see the Ohio State Marching Band, which uh, is just arguably the best band in the country. Um, and when you have everyone in an organization who has you know, tried so hard, they have to try out every single year to be in that band and so many people try out for that band. So they're really able to take the best of the best marchers and players and put them all into one group. And when you see that high level of execution going on, um, I think it inspires people, I hope it inspires our students to uh, to work a little bit harder, to, to pay a little bit more attention to the details that make uh, a band go from good to great. Uh, we talk about the details all the time and, and when you watch that band perform and you see how everybody's doing things in such a detailed way and such a um, high level of execution, uh, not only is it really impressive and fun to watch, but hopefully it inspires people to, to be better. What time will the swing band perform on Saturday, and is this event open to the public? Yes, we're, we're slated to perform at 7 p.m., and they have bands starting at 10 a.m., so uh, we will not be there the whole day. We'll, we'll arrive on campus about, you know, 4 o'clock or so, and we'll get ready for our performance at 7 o'clock, and then we'll be watching the Ohio State Band at about 9 o'clock. So uh, we'll get to see a few other bands between our performance and their performance. Um, but yes, it is available to the public. Uh, the tickets are on sale at the gate that day for $25 each. And through Wednesday, I believe, uh, you can buy them for $20 online by going to the Ohio State Marching Band website. And finally, this Friday's home game is the final home game of the regular season. Tell us what to expect with this week's senior show. Well, this week's senior show uh, was voted on by all of our seniors at the beginning of the season. They voted on which songs they wanted to perform, uh, some of their favorite music from their past uh, years in band, their freshman, sophomore, and junior years. And um, they've chosen three songs. One is The Phantom of the Opera, Enter Sandman, and Jungle Boogie. So those were some of their favorite songs that they did. And the students were given the opportunity to write the routines and come up with the formations. Um, I know uh, Arabella Collins is our senior majorette. She created the routines for the, the majorettes and she also choreographed a uh, band dance during Enter Sandman. Uh, we had Ryan Hookie and Wes Farnham, senior percussionists, write a drum break for the, for the music for Enter Sandman. Um, and we had several students step up and write the routines for the other th three songs. And um, I'm not going to try to list all their names right now because I'd probably leave somebody out, but uh, we've had some great leaders and great seniors put a, what I think is a very good senior show together. They've done a very good job 
in, in writing these routines, that they, they fit the music well and they're interesting and they've got good formations to look at on the field. So um, I hope people really like this year's uh, senior show from the class of 2024. Thanks, Mr. Neal. That will do it for this edition of Swing. Once again, Swing is brought to you each week by Johnny's Music Shop. For Mr. Neal, I'm your host, Alyssa Jakubik. Thanks for watching and always go Tigers. More than 6 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. Nearly two-thirds of all Alzheimer's patients are women. One out of three seniors will die from Alzheimer's or one form of dementia. In 2023, Alzheimer's and other dementias will cost the United States $345 billion. There is no cure for Alzheimer's, but there is hope. The Alzheimer's Association is leading the fight to create a world without Alzheimer's. You can help by joining Team Tiger and the Walk to End Alzheimer's on Saturday, October 14th at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. The first survivor of Alzheimer's is out there, but we won't get there without your help. The end of Alzheimer's starts with me. The end of Alzheimer's starts with you. Let's end Alzheimer's. Hey Tiger fans, don't forget that Massillon City School District has a renewal levy on the ballot Tuesday, November 7th. Issue 31 is not a new tax and will not increase taxes. It was first passed by voters in 1999 and has been renewed every five years. Issue 31 will help our district maintain current operations and programming. And always, go Tigers! Most of us are engaged with the internet in one way or another every day. A fast, secure connection matters. It keeps us entertained, informed, engaged. MCTV cares about keeping you engaged, no matter what's thrown your way. Need an upgrade? Choose from a range of reliable options, including whole home Wi-Fi. MCTV. We go the extra smile.